Good morning, friends, and welcome to Saturday, June 19th. Harold Durfee will start us off with, You will know we are Christians by our love. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that our unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love. By our love, yes, they'll know. by our love, by our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will work with each other, we will work side by side, we will work with each other, we will work side by side, and we'll guard each man's dignity and save each man's pride. They'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. All praise to the Father from whom all things come, and all praise to Christ Jesus, His only Son, and all praise to the Spirit. Saturday's devotions are from the Upper Room Discipline, written by Claire Keene. And our scripture is from 1 Samuel 17, 1a, 4 to 11, 19 to 23, and 32 to 49. Now the Philistines gathered their armies for battle, and they were gathered at Soko. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. David rose early in the morning and let the sheep with, let, left the sheep with the keeper, took the provisions and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the encampment of the army and was going forth in battle to the battle line, shouting the war cry. Israel and the Philistines drew up for battle, army against army. And David let the things in charge of the keeper of the baggage and ran to the ranks and went and greeted his brothers. And as he talked with them, the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, came out of the ranks of the Philistines and spoke the words as some before. And David heard him. All the Israelites, when they saw the man fled from him and were very much afraid, the illust okay. And David said to Saul, Let no one heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight this Philistine. But Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. You are just a boy, and he has been a warrior for him as youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep the sheep for his father. And whenever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went after it and struck it down, rescuing the lamb from its mouth. And if it turned against me, I would catch it by the jaw and strike it down and kill it. 
Your servant has killed both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like the one of them, since he has defied the armies of the living God. David said, The Lord who saved me from the paw of the lion, from the paw of the bear, will save me from the hand of this Philistine. And so Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. And Saul clothed David in his armor, and he put on a bronze helmet on his head and, and clothed him with a coat of mail. And David strapped Saul's sword over his armor and tried in vain to walk, for he was not used to them. And then David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I am not used to them. So David removed them, and then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth smooth stones from the wadi and put them in his shepherd's bag in the pouch he sl and his sling in his hand as he drew near the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and drew near to David and there with his shield bearer in front of him. And when the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him for he was only a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. And the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you have come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the field. But David said to the Philistine, You come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This very day the Lord will deliver you to my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head and give you the dead bodies of the Philistine army this very day to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not say by sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you to, into our hand. And when the Philistine drew nearer to David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in the bag, took out a stone, slung it, and struck the Philistine on the forehead. And the stone sank deep into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Who or what is your Goliath? Who will protect you mightily, battle for you, gather spoils into your treasury? Who stands between you and your least desired future? What wealth or weapon lies ready in your vault? When COVID-19 reached the author's hometown last spring, churches and universities ceased face-to-face -face gatherings. Hospitals were buying extra space for quarantine wards, and the stock market plummeted. Masks, respirators, and hand sanitizer were in short supply. Sports championships were canceled. A huge sinkhole gaped mall-like on campus. Already, operatives had attacked our digital security. The southeast had flooded, and then a nighttime tornado struck Middle Tennessee, killing 31. This was a different sort of March madness. Our medical systems, transportation, economy, infrastructure, entertainment, and internet were faltering. We could no longer blissfully depend on them. These, those Goliaths, could not underwrite our dreams. We breathe in, we breathe out. Ah, yes, the spirit still brings life. Babies will be born today. Parents will conceive today. Some kindly hands and hearts will serve up chili for the hungry. Some pilot will land the plane safely. Some firefighters will save bodies from flames. Some nurse will gently bathe the patient. Some doctor save a heart. Some voices will sing hymns and chant prayers to lift our souls. 
A dad will do the laundry, a mom feed and bathe the little ones, a grandparent will read stories to children who heads nod sleepily. Some scientists may discover a never before seen star and some teacher will inspire a lifetime pursuit. Some priest will bless and pardon and some sailor turn the rudder toward home. Some young shepherd will stand up to a giant and save the people. We love as God anoints us and the spirit, not God, Goliath, but God anoints and the spirit uplifts us and empowers our life. Let us pray. Breathe into your us, O God, that we may depend on you alone and breathe you out again upon each other. Amen. Our closing hymn is God of grace and God of glory. God of grace and God of glory, on thy people are thy power. Crown thine ancient church's story, bring her but to glorious flower. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this hour. For the facing of this hour. Count on God and the Holy Spirit.